Today, we will talk about the building blocks uh, of the digital revolution, uh, about some frameworks that help us to think digitally about what is going on. If you think about the digital revolutions, the, the basic uh, distinction in the digital revolution is, is two parts of it. First of all, we digitized data and, and communication, and that has been going on since the mid of the last century, since Claude Shannon fam famous conceptualized the bit in 1948. And, and today, you know, communication is, is traveling at the speed of light through radio waves, through fiber optic cables all around the globe. And according to Albert Einstein, the speed of light is the fastest information can travel. So basically we maxed that out quite a bit already. Not everybody is connected yet. The paradigm is still uh, diffusing. Not all information is yet digitized and digitalized. Uh, but you know, we're working on that and we're getting to the end of this paradigm. And a new paradigm is arising that has to do with knowledge. So you're going from uh, data and, and, and communication towards knowledge. Now, this is all part of, of, of the digital revolution, humans learning how to transform information. And if we go back and look at the big picture, which is one of the main uh, conceptual frameworks of this of this course, is this, the same thing, these subwaves, uh, Schumpeterian long waves, and we'll talk much more about that in a later session, uh, have always happened also in previous technological revolutions. When we became, when we started to master matter, the transformation of matter. We did that in different steps. The Stone Age, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age. When we started to master energy, the transformation of energy, we did that in different steps. Water with the water mills, steam engines, electricity, uh, combustion engines, and so forth. And all of that together then, these waves that build onto each other cumulatively, we call human progress from an inf innovation theoretic theoretic perspective. So let's focus more on these two steps that we are in the midst of in this, in this uh, digital revolution. Data and communication and knowledge and, and, and algorithms. This has to do with artificial intelligence. So let's take a concrete case. We want to make the world a better place. So let's take the Uni United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. One of these goals, these are this, this is the global agenda. So all countries, sovereign countries on planet Earth agreed on that we should work on this. Uh, and one of the goals is to ensure sustainable food production systems and implement resilient agricultural practices that increase productivity. So how can we use the digital, how can the digital revolution help us to do these kind of things? Well, here's an example I brought from you from Colombia. What they did here is they used weather data and rice crops data, and then they used some algorithms from neuroscience and biology in order to obtain localized knowledge about the rice harvest. So for example, in, in this one town called uh, Saldania, they said they, they found out that uh, solar radiation during the uh, during the grain ripening phase is very important. And in another one, they said another location, they said, well, it's a sensitivity to warm nights. Yeah, doesn't really matter. Basically, they found ways in different locations of how they could increase uh, the rice crops uh, harvest. And this is a very low intervention policy you know it doesn't cost much to make the world a better place if you have because this weather data already exists and the rice crop data already exists and even these algorithms already exist so then the solution was well you have to sow crops at the right time uh, and with that they achieved very high impact so 170 farmers saved 3.6 million dollars that comes to about to comes down to about more than twenty thousand dollars per farmer in a country where the income per household is 16,000. So they, they, they made more out of this intervention, intervention based on information and knowledge than uh, an average family in Colombia would make. And they tripled the production, talking about fulfilling this goal, right? Agricultural practices that increase productivity. So what information knowledge does, it helps help these farmers in, to, to get themselves out of poverty, to make you know, the world a better place. And this always comes in these two steps. So this is another application. This is from Uruguay, also from, from South America. You can see here what this company is doing. It gets a lot of data. So we're basically, we're creating a platform, a digital reality, a digital twin. That's a technical term. We will talk more about that. A digital twin of reality here, where we basically, what this company does, it looks at you know what's in the earth and it creates a knowledge 
copy, a digital twin of that. And you can see, well, there's so much phosphorus in this earth, so much, and so much rocks are in the earth. And based on that, then it can study this, creates these digital representations of it. And in order to then, once it has this information, communicate it to the farmers and eventually create knowledge, algorithms, the algorithmification of this process in order to increase productivity. So these are always the two steps. First, you need to get the data, the communication among the data, and then you try to create, convert this data into knowledge with algorithms. So basically that's the notion of the, the lecture that I wanna talk about today, but we're gonna break it down and get a little bit more detailed in our, how we create our digital reality. And we break it down to six questions. So what are the main conceptual frameworks? I already said, what well, has to do with two things, with data, the information and then with knowledge, but they are a little bit more concrete. It has to do actually with hardware, with software, and we have to talk about the humans in the loop and what are the frameworks that can help us to think about what's happening, what's going on here, uh, how we create our digital reality. And that goes in these two steps. The, the first step with the data and the communication, I call this digitalization of reality. And the second step with the knowledge and the algorithms, I call it algorithmification. Now, I'm German. Uh, I'm allowed to make up long words that nobody knows how to pronounce. So I will talk a lot about today about algorithmification. Um, and we have to talk then, of course, algorithmification is built on the back of artificial intelligence. So we have to talk about artificial intelligence and we'll spend a lot, lot of time of this lecture and breaking down the different kinds of artificial intelligences and, and how we are using them. And then we can see how society as a result computes this co-computation of what society does together with its knowledge producing algorithms. Um, and at the end was left for us humans. Once the digital revolution is basically done with us, <laughs> we have to also talk about what happens with biological intelligence after all of that. So that's what we talk about today.